Hey, good morning and welcome to Breakthrough Walls. I'm Ken Walls. I'm your host. And and I know I say this like every time I say, man, I'm excited about today's guest. Today's guest, (laughs) I'm telling you, man, I am freaking excited about this guy. This is incredible. So um, you guys are going to you're about to learn some things that that you may have heard before but you probably haven't heard it in the context you're getting ready to hear so without any further from me i want to welcome mr jim ziegler to the show jim thank you so much for being here man i really appreciate it hey hey thank you for having me ken this is exciting uh, I, I, I am ready to do it <laughs> uh, you know you and i caught up here for a few minutes before we got the show started and 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 man i i i can just tell you're filled with wisdom and You know, this show, I created this show um, to help entrepreneurs, people have a a breakthrough in life because I think that, you know, I'll be 50 years old. I've owned a business most of my adult life and and we get stuck, you know, we get stuck and normally it's up there in the head, but but we get stuck and we don't know how to move forward. And and I think that you have enough wisdom to to help a lot of people get unstuck, man. Don't worry about being 50 years old. I got underwear older than you. (laughs) Hey, I've said that to some 20 year olds. I love it, man. No, you know what? I'm excited about turning 50 because I feel like this, you know, people might start taking me serious now. (laughs) Well, you probably got all excited about joining AARP. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. So Get that wanna, extra donut I, at Best Western. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So I, I want to start this with, um, I, I got I got to ask you a question, man. <laughs> I've been dreading this because you told me you, you've been colluding with some friend of mine. You won't tell me who it was. <laughs> okay. So I don't know the exact year, um, but there there was a, a, a story that, that I heard about, about – um, you used to have, and I'm looking over here at my notes, that you used to have a, 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 a buy here, pay here, Lincoln Continental, and there's some story about you driving down the road with a mattress tied to the roof at 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh, that is an absolutely true story. I was making weekly payments. My credit was ruined. I was 35 years old, starting over again. Again, <laughs> you know, cycle. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. I, so I, I packed my every earthly possession into this 1973 Lincoln Continental. <laughs> now this was 1982. Oh my! So God. I had a nine-year-old buy here, paid fifteen hundred. That was a great car, by the way. It wasn't a junker by any means, but it was. It was it it was twenty two feet long. You couldn't see the the hood ornament in the fog. <laughs> Big ass car. Yeah. I'm driving I'm driving up uh, I seventy five headed for Atlanta. I'm starting over again. Uh, uh, I'm I'm broke, divorced, depressed, pissed off. <laughs> driving. To, I'm wearing a white t shirt. I spilled coffee all over myself. Oh, Lord. I smoked cigarettes in those days. I was relighting the, the longest ones out of the ashtray. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, and man. in five years, I was a millionaire. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's, no kidding. That's the other part of that story. Wow. Now, who told you about that? Frank Lopes. Oh, Frank Lopes. He's a great guy. Frank is a great guy. I love I, Frank Lopes. I, I, I talked to Frank for about almost two hours yesterday on the phone. Such a great friend of mine. Good dude. And he just loves the heck out of you, man. He's like, that. that you're going to learn a lot from Jim Ziegler. You were, so, so, so you were 35 years old. You tied a mattress to the roof of your Lincoln Continental. Mm-hmm. You, 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 you headed, headed to Atlanta. Broke as hell. Couldn't finance a bologna sandwich. I had $400 to my name that I borrowed from mom on the way out of town. Wow. And you said, Mom, I'm going to go get rich. (laughs) I checked into a Ramada Inn that was $85 a night. It better happen quick. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) Oh, my Lord have mercy. In Atlanta, huh? Yeah. Oh my now, God. now I knew I was a car salesman. It wasn't like I was total crapshoot. I could get a job anywhere, and and I had been 
a record setting car salesman before the divorce and all that that inspired the depression, you know, so, you know, I was feeling sorry for myself. It was one of those, you, you understand. Yeah. So, yeah. And yeah. so I got a job as a car salesman. I was in an apartment um, very quickly. It, you know, <clears throat> I've never been beaten as a salesman. I'm not, I'm not the world record holder, but nobody ever beat me on a sales force that I was on. Wow. <laughs> wow, man. So, so, um, but tell me, like, so you, you, you were depressed, you were divorced, you, you come, you come to a whole new city. Had you been in Atlanta before, like living there? Never. I, I used to live in Atlanta too, and that's a big, big old town. Well, there was one statistic that drove me to Atlanta. What was that? Women. Women. <laughs> Atlanta is a service-based economy. Right. And it had big secretarial and support. St- it's like women are like seven to one in Atlanta. <laughs> Did I mention I was 35 years old, divorced? <laughs> You're like, I know a quick way to get over this depression. So, yeah. so. <laughs> that move funny. was testosterone driven. <laughs> wow. So what'd yeah. you do? Did you start selling cars? What'd you do? I started selling cars, McNamara Pontiac, and I had known Dennis McNamara previously. Okay. And um, he, he had come to Atlanta, which sort of helped me out. And um, like I say, I was in an apartment very quickly. Wow. And I sold my wife a car. Oh, wow. Yeah. She, I, I had moved to Banner Ford, and my wife came in, and uh, she was all over me like a pork chop. A dog <laughs> with a pork chop. Yeah, she, no, 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 that's not true. <laughs> she sees this broadcast and kill me. <laughs> oh, my gosh, that's funny. She was not all over me like a dog with a pork chop. That's a lie. <laughs> no. no. But I, I dated her for two years before we got married. Wow. And she was so good for me. You see, I have the ability to make a lot of money. Yeah. You know, you par- parachute me naked anywhere in the world. Don't speak the language. Doesn't matter. I'll be rich by the end of the month. You know, <laughs> it's just, you know <laughs> it doesn't matter. You know. Wow. <laughs> I'm an entrepreneur. You you understand the word entrepreneur? I, I I think I do, but I want to hear I want to hear your take on it. In the word in in the French language, the entree is the opening, the door. Ah. And prendre means to take. Got it. So so the opening, the door, the opportunity. Entrepreneur is the opportunity taker. Love that man! Wow. Isn't that cool? That's yeah. really cool, man. So, yeah. The, you know, I, I saw you on I saw you on uh, Lisa Copeland's show, and mm-hmm. and uh, she's you, pissed at you about that too. She what? Yeah, she's pissed at you about that too. She said you steal all her guests. She did not say that. <laughs> oh Lord, no, have she mercy. Did. She probably no. She would never. Would I don't think she that. gets. She 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 loves. Uh, she's a great person. So so the but you said something on her show, and I want to bring it up because. Because it, it's stuck with me since then, and I don't think it's ever going to leave. You you told me, or you told her on the show, um, and I forget what year. It seems like it was in in the in the two thousands, but that that things were not 1991. good. Nineteen ninety one. Ninety one. It was ninety one when things were going really horribly bad. Okay, first of all, you got to understand when I started this company in eighty six. Okay. I had left the car business. We had a pay renegotiation, and I didn't do. I didn't go for it. I came home to my wife. I said, "I'm going to start my company." She said, "What?" what? I said, "I'm a trained car salesman. I'm going to train managers. There's no management trainers out there. I'm going to do all of that." And she said, "Who else is doing this?" I said, "Nobody." <laughs> <laughs> I'm creating an industry. Oh my so lord! I, prom- I promised her that I would go back into the car business. In 90 days, if I didn't make this profitable. Wow. I could get a job anywhere. I was nationally known already. Yeah. Wow. But, you know, I'd set records as a manager, not as a salesman. Right, right. I was a record-setting manager. I was nationally known. I NAD, a lot of people had gotten wind of who I was, and, you know, I could write my own ticket. Yeah. Uh, We got a a contract with Ford Motor Company to consult the Minority Auto Dealers Program and I was on all the training videos, and I was the F&I school for Ford. For Ford. 
Oh my God! I had three, three contracts with Ford that were pretty lucrative, so we made a million dollars our first year. Holy oh, moly! We oh, just bam, right out of the right out of the shoot. So we're trucking along. I get forty employees. I've got I've got people on the road, and all of a sudden, the Gulf War happened. The first Gulf War. Yep. Yep. When 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 Saddam Hussein attacked Kuwait. Right. Right. The economy, I don't know if you recall, that economy crashed and, and ground to a halt during the go. I had 40 employees out there with my American Express card in their pocket. Jeez. And the next thing I know, I, I owe $100,000 to uh, IRS. I owe money, uh, probably about the same amount to American Express. I mean, we had $5,000 total future business on the books. Oh, Lord. Uh, and I'm laying these people off, um, and they're all still friends of mine today. I mean, we, we, nobody was at fault, but I had to lay off everybody. Yeah. Wow. And one old guy stayed with me, a good friend of mine. He passed away. Um, Al Adderholt, I'll say his name. Um, Al Adderholt stayed with me. Wow. And I said, Al, I can't pay you. <laughs> we, we we had made a lot of money, but we had spent a lot of money. Yeah. I mean, and I said, Al, I can't pay you. He said, doesn't matter. I'll, I'll stay with you as long as it takes. So Al and Al started feeding me a – this was January. This was January, and um, I called the IRS. I called – and I, I expected to be locked up in the dungeon in the bottom of the federal building. You know, I don't <laughs> yeah, right. I don't people, people that owe them that much money. Yeah, right. And it wasn't just that I owed them that much money. My accountant had taken it out of the employees' paychecks and not remitted it. Oh God! Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I just I just called the IRS and laid on the sword. Said, "This is what we've done. How can I get out of it?" <laughs> he said, "I so laid they, on the sword." Yeah. They they put me on a payment plan. Wow. I mean, it wasn't so bad. They put me on a payment plan, and and American Express also put me on a payment plan. Wow. And. Yeah, so we I don't know half a million dollars total, three hundred, four hundred. I don't know, but a lot of debt, a lot of debt. Yeah, my wife's account she tell you to the penny. But we owe a <laughs> yeah. lot of money. <clears throat> right. I, mean, I was waking up with heart palpitations in the middle of the night. Yeah. And um, Al Adderhold stayed with me, and I'll never forget. Al Adderhold was going in the computer and the database, feeding me the phone numbers, and you didn't have automatic dialing. I was handheld telephone. I'm. Calling the people up. Yep. And I raised like fifty or sixty thousand dollars short term money. And wow. we paid off all of that debt in fourteen months and maintained good credit. Wow. My credit score now is like eight thirty two and my wife's credit score is eight ninety two. Oh my lord have mercy. I mean she's got better credit than I do. That's and insane. I mean we, we we came out of that with perfect credit. We didn't ruin our credit. We didn't go bankrupt. We didn't lay down on it. There's nothing on earth you can't sell your way out of. That's it right there. there. There's That's it. That's what you said. There's yeah. nothing on earth you can't sell your way out of. Al Adderhold and I making a... Hey, let me tell you what. I was making hundreds of phone calls. Eight o'clock in the morning, I was calling dealers on the East Coast. Nine o'clock at night, I'm talking to dealers in Hawaii. Wow. <laughs> We're calling right across the time zones. That's insane. <laughs> wow. And you're selling them. Oh, 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 closing. Yes, absolutely. Wow. I still I, I still make 100 phone calls a day when I'm in the office. That's, that's unbelievable. And that's conversations. I don't leave messages. I mean, I'm talking to people. Now, most of those conversations are two minutes. Wow. What I mean, about now? What now, so like? Okay, so you're you're a legend, and and so I'm sure that if you call down here to 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 Byers Ford here in Delaware, Ohio, you, you you can probably get the the GM or the owner on the phone because you you, you just have the you have the name right. But if if, they, I, if, if they I say if they say Jim Ziegler's on the phone, that. I can get more people on the phone than anybody, even if they don't like me. What does that son of a bitch want? <laughs> right, right. That's what I mean. But like, you even know, if they, don't if like they me, say, they the if phone. they say Ken Walls is on the phone, he's going to be like, who the hell's that? 
Like, you know, and I'm, I I even bought a car from him. He'd still say, who the hell's that? So I've got a great hot. trick to get past the, the gatekeeper. Yeah, let's hear this. You ready? Yeah. Can I tell him who's calling? Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, I have his test results back from the free clinic. <laughs> They never ask again. They put you right through. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that is funny. Holy crap. I'm going to try that. So, so, but I mean. Be sure there, they have a sense of humor before you do. That's true. That's true. And you have one for sure. <laughs> I can tell. So, so is, but what do you say to the person that, because man, I know like you've, you've been, you've been through the crap. I remember back then, man, and and oh eight oh nine, like the the economy took a tank, and, and we did our, it again. Our our business, you know, because I'm in the internet business, like like similar to you. I don't do car dealerships, but um, but like you know, like I'm in, I, and we like went, oh god, things are going bad, and then I saw a quick turn because people started going, well, wait a minute, because we're a marketing firm, so so people are, businesses are going well we got to invest in marketing or we're dead. So, you know, we saw a pretty quick turn, but what about the people out there that are, are, are stuck right now and they just don't, what, what would you tell anybody that can't pay their bills? Can't, can't buy food. Can't pay the, what would you, what would you say to that guy that's stuck? Well, people are stuck as a result of choices they have made. Right. I mean, very few people are victims. And you, sometimes, sometimes you have to suck it up, Buttercup, and just um, you know accept you know what's 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 happening. I, I mean, I I have been on the bottom a number of times, right? And you always have to say that uh, there's got to be a plan. You got to work the plan. You got to have faith. You got to come back strong. Yep. You and you've got to you've got to uh, Napoleon Hill. The, the, the godfather of motivation. Yeah, yeah. Anything a man can conceive and believe he can achieve, I'm sure he meant a person, but he, he wasn't quite socially correct. <laughs> yeah, anything, right. Anything a man can conceive and believe he can achieve. I mean, if you can think it and believe that it's possible, it's possible. Do it. You know, yeah. I have, I have always thought that um, success is a choice. Amen. To Success that. is a choice. I mean, it's something, something you decide to do. Wow. Because when I was driving that old beat up car from it, uh, from Jacksonville to Atlanta, I, I made two decisions. Decision number one: I will be a success. Yeah. I mean, I decided that night, and I'm not saying the people out there in your audience are not success. I'm talking to you. I'm not right. saying you're not successful. But you're certainly not as successful as you could be, should be, deserve to be, or capable of being. Everybody watching this broadcast is operating at a level below your ability, uh, below your capacity. And you better be really thankful for that. Because if you're operating at your best right now, if you're doing the best job you can possibly do, you're getting all you're ever going to get. You've got to believe you can stretch higher, reach farther, get more, do more, be more, have more. Wow. Than you now do. <clears throat> wow, man! Belief system. I love that. That's so true. That's so as soon as true. you start to believe you're doing the best job you can do, and I see these arrogant people. I'm doing the best job you can do. You know, I go. I get hired by a dealer, and you know, I'm not the highest paid consultant. I get ten thousand dollars a day plus travel. And I, wow. I fly first class. I don't fly in the back of no planes. <laughs> I don't even know what goes on in the back of a plane. I looked back there one time and looked like a prison car. People sitting six across, groveling for peanuts. I mean, it's awful. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I ain't going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> that is funnier than hell. I don't fly in the back of no plane. <laughs> oh, my God, that's funny. I put that in my ads. I've had meeting planners say, okay, okay, I know you don't fly in the back of no plane. <laughs> Oh, that is I used to funny. piss off my competitors. I, <laughs> I'd, I'd run ads ads when print ads were big in the, in the publications. I'd run ads on automotive news. If you're thinking about using such and such, it's time to upgrade to first class and hire a singular. 
Oh my god! Oh my god! That is funnier than hell. So, so, so you, you. Okay, wow! I think I just totally lost my train of thought. All I can I'm picture sorry. is all the prisoners in the back of the plane. So, so, um, wow! That's funny, man. So, so you. Okay, but that brings me to a, a, a point, and I, I think that you'll you'll agree. Now, but I, I do want to back up a little bit and, and yeah. say, you know, you're driving up the road and, and, and you're going from Jacksonville to Atlanta. You're in a, in a, a, a 1972 or 70? 73. 73. Lime, lime green, Lincoln Town, uh, Continental. <laughs> I, my first car was a 1974 um, Ford LTD. It wasn't 22 feet long, but it was dang close. <clears throat> had that big block 400 in it but like so you're driving in this buy here pay here car mm-hmm. tote note tote tote note car and, tote note car yeah and 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 you're you're heading to atlanta fresh out of a, a a divorce or just just got divorced you're depressed you got 400 dollars that your mom gave you and 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 you, do you have a good? I mean, it's hard to have a good attitude, I reckon, if you're depressed. So I made a good attitude during that drive. Did you? <clears throat> that drive was like nine hours, yeah. and I I hit the Atlanta traffic rush at seven o'clock in the morning. Oh God! And I'm on I'm on I two eighty five. I can't see the mirrors because I got all my crap in the car with me. <laughs> Only mirror that I can use is the driver's side mirror. Oh my and if God. you've ever seen Atlanta traffic, it's seven o'clock in the morning, eight lanes across, yeah. going eighty miles an hour, weaving in and out of each other. Yep, it's <laughs> and nuts. I'm just a redneck. I'm just a redneck kid from Jacksonville. Wow! <laughs> you know, wow! Driving in that traffic rush. So you you developed a good attitude along the way. So my 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 thing is is it, it does success. It it truly does come down to the way that you're viewing the world, it, doesn't it? Like it's your. Well, it's I about made a attitude. second decision that a second decision that night. Okay. There were two decisions. Yep. Decision number one: I will be the ultimate success I'm capable of being. Yep. Decision number two: I will study my profession as surely as if I'm studying for a master's degree in any other profession. If I'm going to be a car salesman, I'm going to be a car manager. I'm going to be the best car manager. I'm going to I'm going to seek out role models, mentors, the best people that teach me the best things. I'm going to attend all the classes, and I'm going to get rid of the losers, the whiners, the wimps, the criminals, the has-beens out of my life. Wow. Get rid of bad people, even if you're related to them. <laughs> yep. I agree <laughs> yeah. with that. Best you decision know, I, see, I ever made right I there. I see these dealers that hire some of them and, and – a lot of them have really smart children that come up into business and, and are great. But other dealers have kids that I call the, the lucky sperm club. <laughs> they, they, they won a race with five million other sperm cells once and got shit since. <laughs> oh, God. But that's that's the case in a lot of businesses, right? Yeah. That's it. The, Peter, the Peter principle. Yeah. <laughs> Get rid of bad people. Even if. If you're related to them, I'm sorry. When I when I became a manager, and, and here, here's my my wife came from a pretty affluent family, mm-hmm. and you know my family wasn't as such. My dad was an enlisted man in the U.S. Navy for three kids. You know yeah. we weren't poor, but we certainly weren't wealthy. Right. And right. my wife introduced me to a whole new world. Sure. And when it came time to get married, she said my parents are going to have problem with me marrying a car salesman. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I said, well, what if I was a manager? She yeah. said, that'd be better. So I went to the dealer and said, look, i got to be a manager. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> oh, my God. And the third month in the, in the management role, I set the world record. I mean, it just got to be, you know, I, wow. I became nationally known. I, I got in with some of the biggest dealerships in the country. and Oh, my God. It, it was really, I, I, I was good at it. But studied my profession. Yeah. My business card says James A. Ziegler, CSP. Now, you know what that is. Mm-hmm. Certified Speaking Professional. Yeah. And it has a comma that says HSG. James A. Ziegler, CSP, HSG. What's the HSG? High school graduate. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you put PhD shit on yours, I put HSG on mine. <laughs> Oh my God, I love that, it's man! It's on my business cards. <laughs> oh my God, that is incredible! Wow, so <laughs> wow, that man, see, that's what that's that's what it takes. Those doing stuff that separates you. So let let me let me back up for like way back for a minute. Where were you born and raised? Were you born and raised in Jacksonville? Well, I was raised in Jacksonville. I was born in Abington, Pennsylvania. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I don't remember Abington. My my dad was in the Navy. We we moved, you know. Yeah. I lived in Meridian, Mississippi for three years, but once again, the Navy. Yep, yep. I was John McCain's babysitter when what? he was a student pilot. Are you serious? Yeah. John McCain was a student pilot at NAAS Meridian, and my dad was the leading chief of his training squadron, VT-9. Oh, my and God. He had he had two children he had adopted by his first wife, Dougie and Andy, and I babysat Dougie and Andy for John McCain. Are you kidding me? Wow. That's incredible. That's incredible. I've got to write a book sometime about just some I've done some I've done so much. I've I've done most people's bucket list. That's insane, man. So you you so okay, so you, you, you ended up in in Jacksonville though, right? Right. We went back to Jacksonville after okay. Meridian. Okay. Which is where I think my brother, he was in the Navy. I think his his uh, battle, he was on a carrier. I think his carrier group was based out of Jacksonville, I believe. Well, my dad was was a Airedale Navy, you know, the Aviation Navy. Yeah. He was on 17 cruises. Oh, my gosh. He was wow. gone a lot. Yeah. And my, my mom taught us the entrepreneurial thing. You talk about entrepreneurial, being raised as an entrepreneur, we were. <clears throat> were you really? My sister's one of the top real estate agents in the entire state of North Carolina. Oh, my gosh. Wow. I mean, we, we, we grew up with a mom that I was a sales manager when I was eight. For what? Yeah. Doing what? My mom's driving down Cassidy Avenue in Jacksonville. <clears throat> That's like 1956. I'm like six years old. And I, she hears me yelling, hey, mom. And she looks up, and I'm 50 feet up in a tree cutting mistletoe and throwing it down to the big boys. I'm oh. like six years old, cutting mistletoe on, the, on a tree branch. Yeah. So she said, we're not. So we, we, we stood outside the grocery stores and the Rexall. Gro and, you know, we sold the mistletoe at Christmas time to ladies coming out of the, the store. Wow. Ten cents a handful. Yeah. So. The next year, my dad said, you're not doing that this year. We go out in the forest, and he cuts down a whole limb with 200 pounds of mistletoe. Oh, wow. We drug it out of the forest. We put it in a bucket with fertilized water. And my mom gets bows and rubber bands and makes real nice sprigs out of it. Yeah. And then I got my friends. Lonnie, you got Rexall. Bobby, you got Winn-Dixie. We're going to sell for 25 cents a sprig. You get ten cents, I get ten cents. My mom gets a nickel. Oh my God! Are so I'm a sales manager. Wow, <laughs> you were man. Yeah, eight years old, and I had all the kids in the neighborhood working for me. And two months. <laughs> now, honest to God, Ken, two months a year, I made more money than my dad, who was 25 years in the military. Oh my God. <laughs> when I was eight years old. So you so learned early on. Told, you learn early on, sell. You got to learn how to sell and manage. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I have been continuously employed since I was 14. Wow. Holy, I've had, holy. I've had two jobs at once sometimes. You know, I was a DJ. Wow. I, the, the, the longest I had a job was WAPE Radio in Jacksonville, the legendary Big Ape. Wow. Um, it's, we did, we did, I was the, promotions director Jeez. when we had the great rambling raft race and all the pr pr promotions the radio station did i put those together wow. plus i did a, plus i did an air shift i was dr x a big time radio celebrity no kidding holy moly J man. jay thomas worked with me Jeez. you know jay thomas the hockey player on yeah, cheers yeah 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 he 
I did, I did all the comedy voices on his show. I was all the character voices that that on his show. And we're talking late sixties, early seventies. Holy crap, man! You have done a lot of unbelievable things. What? No, I, I, so, I used to do. I used to do Nixon. You used to do Nixon. Yeah. Let's let's see you do Nixon. Well. There was a guy named Chris Clendon. Him, him and I both did Nixon at different times. Uh, now, now, my Nixon, oh, Jay, this is Dick. Jay, Jay, Jay I, I'm very upset. <laughs> That's pretty good, Nixon. <laughs> uh, Jay, I heard you're having a great rambling raft race. That's right, Mr. President. We're going to have sun, fun, water, even some gators. Water, gators. Oh, Jay, I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> Oh my god! Oh my god! See, that's what that's what like you've got the you've got the sense of humor, man. You've got like that's what it takes. That's what it takes. It's like like you, you, you and learning your craft, man. That's it. You've you've done it. You've done it. So so my let, wife but let, didn't let me know I could speak. What's my that? Wife had no, my wife had no idea I could speak. When I, when, I, when I told her we were going to do it, the first thing we did was this F&I seminar, finance and issues. Yeah. We had 17 attendees. Okay. And my wife was scared to death of this new company. 17 people, $500 a student. Only problem was only two of them paid. Oh, God. The other 15 were friends of mine for photo ops. <laughs> oh, jeez. To, to, to make the two that paid think it was a good seminar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. oh my god are you kidding me that's wow. how we started the company wow yeah wow that's you that's know, insane and how many or, yeah you, how many like i know you're doing a big thing up in detroit here what in july yeah. is that right so, in august, uh, august internet internet battle plan right right so what we do is my wife and i produce conferences okay We'll have about 200 attendees, 20 sponsors, 20 speakers. Wow. And none of the speakers are paid. They pay, they pay to speak. Wow. <clears throat> wow. Yeah. That's incredible. <laughs> so, 20 speakers. Matter of fact, Frank Lopes is going to be one of them. Wow. And he's going to help me moderate. And um, Frank is, it's Frank pretty, is it's awesome. It's a pretty big event. It's going to make... Um, a high six digits. Wow. That's And incredible. we do two of those a year. We did one in Clearwater here in February, and yeah. we're going to Detroit in August. It's a Greek town casino. Yeah, yeah. The website is internetbattleplan.com. Internet. And I'll, I'll be promoting some of that throughout today, actually, too, for you. Um, but the so, – so let let me ask you this, though. What – like, what made you get into – the car, like I told you, somebody told me the other day. I keep saying I'm not in the car business. I've never sold a car in my life, and 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 yet yet I'm connected to everybody in the car business. And and but what made you like? Why not? Like I, my first sales job was for a telecom company. Like why didn't you go that route? What made you go into the car business? Well, what happened was Jay Thomas went and became an actor. Okay. He got a, he got a part on the Mork and Mindy show, which was the number one show on TV at the time. Yeah, Robin Williams. So he, yeah, and I, I I could tell you about riding around in a motorhome with Robin Williams. If you want to hear that story? But wow. So Jay, Jay Jay brought what Robin Williams back to Jacksonville when Mork and Mindy was number one show on TV. Wow. So when Jay went on the Mork and Mindy, it's sort of like the gang broke up. Okay. And I had a Honda dealer that just absolutely thought I was spectacular. He wanted me to sell cars, and he finally talked me into selling cars for one of his dealerships, um, Superior Datsun. Wow. Datsun. I started out selling Datsuns. Um, wow. The third month in the business, I made $4,500. I set the record for the store. And wow. we're talking 1976, Ken. That's a lot of money in 1976. I had never made that much money as a radio executive. Right. I mean, I was... I had a real so-called respectable position. Yeah. I was general sales manager of a radio station. Wow. I, you know, WEXI, small station, but I, I was, you know, and I'd been with WAPE, and then all of a sudden, 
I made $4,500. Wow. I was just going to do this till I could get a good job. Then wow. I said, wait a minute, this is the good job. Wow. You know, $4,500 in 1976. That's got to be... 25000 today. At least, yeah. I was yeah. going to say, holy crap, man. Wow. So, 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 okay, so that... And I've heard this story before. I've heard this story. I got into car sales and the, and I, and I exploded and made all this money and it was like crack. <laughs> I was hooked. I was hooked. Oh yeah. So I never smoked. I never smoked crack, people. That's his. No. I no. never did. I never did cocaine either. So, Marijuana. You didn't. You I was did. a disc jockey at a rock and roll station. Yeah. You didn't inhale, right? They, so, they've got. They got countries in Central America that have statues of me in the park. <laughs> oh my God! So, so you got so you got into the car business, but and and obviously it's 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 done you well. Um, how you create an entire industry yeah. out of it, training and 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 everything that you do. Um, but you know, again, this show is is about helping people get unstuck. And and I like I like to hear the perspective from somebody, especially you. Um, what do you see? Because I I know like you're on Facebook, you're very active in social media, and and I know that you see people making mistakes. I know you you watch and and you probably hold your tongue and and you know don't say anything. But like, what is the biggest thing in your opinion you think that people do that holds them back from from success? They start closing before they have a relationship. I, when I make a hundred calls a day, I'm not selling anything. Yep. Now, what I do is I call people up and I, I tell car salesmen this all the time and, and real estate people don't always have an agenda. Yep. And here's, here's one of my best on the phone lines. You're going to like this. This is, hi, hey, Ken, Jim Ziegler, listen, um, I don't have an agenda for this call. I'm not going to try to sell you anything today. I just want to see how you're doing. Did your wife get that promotion? You know, I get it. I, I, I don't have an agenda for this call. I'm not going to try to sell you anything. I just want to see how you're doing. And nobody does that. Yeah. And I, I can't tell you how many times people in the middle of that conversation, well, Jim, when's your next seminar? <clears throat> wow. Yeah. And I, I do a lot of business by referral. Yeah. The best way to get referrals is to give referrals. Amen. I tell, people, I tell people, my God, look, did you ever sell a plumber a car? Did you ever sell an electrician a car? How many did you ever sell somebody that owns a florist shop? Did you refer anybody to them? Right. You know, I'm, I'm a prospecting fool. I can walk out of any dealership in the country eight o'clock in the morning, provided it's not raining or bad weather. It's not a Sunday. It's not a holiday. I'll sell a car to a stranger before the sun sets. Yeah. I, I can sell a car anywhere. Yeah. And, but it's all relationship based. Right. If I, if I had had social media when I was actively in the in industry, you know, what could I have done? Oh I was God. operating with a flat file Rolodex and a 10 key calculator. <laughs> that was my CRM. <laughs> right. <laughs> I know. I get that, man. Yeah. I, I was I've asking somebody. 150,000 people on social media. Yeah. 150,000. That's crazy, man. That's LinkedIn, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Yeah. Uh, you know, a little bit of Google Plus is still around. But I tell you, social media, the important thing is to have relevant people. Right. Yep. You know, you can... I love people from India. I love people from China, but they can't help me. You know, you put all these people that have no relation to your business in your, your yeah, Facebook, yeah. YouTube. I've got 150,000 relevant people. That's awesome. If I man. put a post on, on Facebook. I'm going to get a hundred responses. Yeah. Cause I've they're active. They're they're You've seen it. I've seen it. I've participated. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I, I, I I'm a little controversial. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, know, you know, it's fun to be cut for I'll, I'll start some political crap and then I'll just get out of the way and not come in again, watch him fight it out. 
<laughs> well, and I've heard I've heard that you've taken on you know some and not necessarily political, but that you've um, you've taken on some 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 big big you know. Uh, yes, I have challenges. I guess. Um, well, yeah. The, the, I tell you what, I I did something a couple of years ago, and I, I brought a major corporation to their knees. I'm not going to say who or what because we we're friends now. Matter of fact, they they sponsor my events and they've they've changed their entire format. Wow! But the Federal Trade Commission came after me. Wow! Yeah, they 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 said I organized a national boycott, and I almost got prosecuted. I, it was about fifty thousand dollars in legal fees getting out of that. Holy moly! Yeah. Wow. So. Yeah, I, I do not do boycotts. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that it's ill. I didn't know there's a law against boycotting. Uh, yeah, well, evidently there is. Um, wow. <laughs> I, I got a great attorney, Lenny Belavia, up in New York. <laughs> yeah. Wow. wow. So, I so don't, I don't mess. I don't mess with the Federal Trade Commission anymore. Right. So let, I've, let, got, I've got some followers on on YouTube and uh, some followers on Facebook and LinkedIn. And you ever get a, 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 like a pit bull? You say sick them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. I, yeah, I, I got some. I got some followers that'll, that'll go at it. Yeah, in my behalf. <clears throat> well, that's because you've brought so much value for so long. So, so you know, let me ask you this though: Where did Alpha Dog come from? How'd that all start? There was an old car salesman named Irving Silver. Okay. And Irving was one of my best friends. He, he died about five years ago. He was 96, I believe. Wow. And he was the top salesman in the world in the car business. <clears throat> you know, people talk about Joe Girard. Irving, Irving was, was a, a war hero, World War II. Mm-hmm. He was awarded the Silver Cross by... Um, General Douglas MacArthur personally. Wow. And Irving worked with me at Tron Collie Motors. He was just an exceptional salesman. And he gave me a hat that said Da Man. D A M A N. Yeah. I trademarked that. Wow. I trademarked for a couple of years. Da Man. Yeah. And my license tag in my car said Da Man. You know. Wow. You remember the you remember the movie um Miracle on 34th Street. Well, of course, it's one of my favorite the, movies. The, Nat, the, Nat, the Natalie Wood version. Yeah. Maureen O'Hara. Yeah. Yep. Remember that? The old one, yeah. Yeah. How did they prove that he was the actual one and only Santa Claus? Do you remember? No. Dun, 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 dun. I don't remember. You remember? The, 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 <clears throat> they delivered letters to him. Oh, yes. <clears throat> yes, yes, and, yes. John Payne said, the U.S. government recognizes this as the only Kris Kringle of Santa Claus. Yep. So when I had the man trademarked, yeah. people say, I'm the man. No, you're not the man. <laughs> I'm recognized by the U.S. government. <laughs> oh, I have the one and only the man. <laughs> 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 I freaking love that. Holy crap. I love that. I, when Irving died, I decided to retire demand. Wow. And I was up in living in Atlanta, the Georgia Bulldogs. I, yeah. I became the alpha dog. I wanted a logo and I wanted a logo big enough where people could see it. Yeah, I love it. I love <laughs> Jump it. Out at you. And it's so ostentatious. You know, you know, oh golly, it's it's, it's funny. You, know, <laughs> you ever see the movie Hooper with Burt Reynolds? I don't know. I I remember he, it. But same, I... He was playing the same character as Smokey and the Bandit, only he was he was Hooper. Okay. You know? Okay. Yeah. And Terry Bradshaw was in that movie. Yeah. Yeah. Quarterback. Yeah. And he got in a bar fight, and Terry Bradshaw said, "What do you do?" And Burt Reynolds said, "I show off." <laughs> Relate to that. <laughs> so the I'm glad dinosaurs are extinct because I'd probably get drunk and try to ride one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. So, so you're so you're the alpha dog. How long has alpha dog been around now? Long well, time. Died about five years ago. Yeah. Oh, was it five? 
Uh, maybe a little longer. Okay. I'm, I don't so, do well with time. So, yeah, I'm with you. Just, I, I, I'll say something happened the other day, and my wife will say, Jim, that was five years ago. <laughs> yeah. Oh, was it the other day? <laughs> no. I'm the same exact time, way. Time doesn't, time doesn't matter to I, me. Yeah, you know, just, yeah. Well, I, I always say I used to drink a lot. I don't drink anymore, but I used to. I think that's why I think everything. Like, no, that I don't drink anymore. I don't drink any less. But <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So, so what's what's you know what's coming next? What's what's next for you? Because you've done a lot, man. I mean, you got you're doing how many of these? You do like three or four we're doing, of these. We're doing, I'm actually slowing it down now. I'm gonna be in Pennsylvania this week. I'm gonna be at. Um, Oh God! One of the Kia stores. I'm trying to remember. My my friend Jake Leibowitz. Okay, Pittsburgh. Allentown Kia. I'm gonna be in Allentown Kia oh, this Allentown. week. I'm I'm flying out Thursday. I'm gonna do a meeting for him. Uh, but yeah. uh, you know, back in 2006, seven, 2005, I was billing ninety thousand a month just on my own time, not counting my employees' time. Wow. Plus the seminar revenues. Yeah, yeah. You know. We were doing like $5 million annually with just a couple employees. Wow. And that was $10,000 a day in the, in the dealerships, and I can still do that. Yeah. But I don't want to. I mean, you know, I've got it. I have a theory called enough money. I don't have Grant Cardone money. Right, so right. you got a jet. You're a jet. <laughs> yeah. You, you need a jet, jet, man. You need a jet. I don't have Grant Cardone money, but I'm not hustling that hard, you know, right, just – um right. I'm 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 not coasting, but I've slowed it down. Yeah, and so many good things are happening, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, man, you're you're one heck of a guy, and I I I, I you know from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate you being on here today. So, ha, like, I know that you know that all the car people that that follow me already know you. There's Eric Browers on here. He's he 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 loves you. So, Let me see who all's on here with us. Oh my God, we got a bunch of people that, that have been in and out. But um, yeah. I have comments up over here. But um, what would you? What What would the? You know, for the for anybody struggling, and and I've been there many many times as an entrepreneur. You know, I, I've I, I I called a, a buddy of mine has a hundred million dollar a year company. His dad does. I called the dad one day and I said I had one employee. <clears throat> paid him $500 a week. He was a graphic designer that worked for me. And it was my first employee, and I couldn't pay the guy. Like, I couldn't pay him. And I'm like, shit, what am I going to do? I can't pay this guy. So I call up my buddy's dad, who's got a $100 million a year company, and I said, how in the – I said, I don't want a loan. I don't want money from you. I just want to know, like, is it worth it? What's the secret here? Like I'm, I'm stressing the hell out <laughs> payrolls tomorrow and I can't pay this dude. And it's only $500. What the hell? And, and he said, man, there's no secret. There's no, he goes, if there's a secret here, it is. You stay in the ring, you keep running, you keep fighting and you don't let the effing tiger catch you. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the truth. That's what he I said. was living. I was living with a roommate for a while named Louis Monera and I was splitting the rent. We're living in a pretty upscale apartment. Yeah. We we actually had a butler live in with us on the three bedroom place. Had a what? A butler. Oh God. We had a butler. We're two single guys. We had a butler. Oh jeez. And he and oh, he, he worked for minimum wage and room and board. You know, just and. We, it's so cool. You have a date. The butler comes out and serves you. And so one day, Lewis says, where are you going, Jim? I said, well, I've got to go get the rent. He said, yes, yeah, due tomorrow. I said, yeah, and I, I don't have it. i got to go get it. He said, well, where are you going to go get it? I said, I haven't figured that out yet. But <laughs> I've only got a quarter of a tank in the Cordoba. I was driving a Chrysler Cordoba. Oh, I said, okay. I've only got a quarter of a tank in the Cordoba. And oh my God. If, I, if I don't get the money, I won't be back. <laughs> oh, so I went over to a, a Holiday Inn in Orange Park, and I was sitting in the bar trying to figure out where I'm going to get the money. Wow. So I asked the bartender, I said, well, is the owner here, Mr. Posen? I, she said, so she brought him out. Yeah. I said, Mr. Posen, your waitresses could really be more productive. He said, what do you mean? I said, they need some training. <laughs> 
He said, well, what kind of trousers? I have a course. <laughs> did, and you didn't. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my dear God. Are you kidding me? I came back with the money. Oh, my God. I, I was billing myself as um, a hypnotist because I, I do hypnosis shows. Yeah. So I got uh, Golf Life hired me to do a speech on living with stress and winning. I've got it in my scrapbook. Oh, my gosh. And they paid me $7,000. 1970. Well, this is when I was a disc jockey. Wow. Like 1973. Seven thousand dollars. I've got I've got a whole all the whole photo spread. They flew executives in from all over the country. Oh my gosh! So I told, told my roommate Manera. I said, uh, he said, well, what are you going to talk about? I said, well, I'm going to go to the bookstore and get a bunch of paperbacks on stress and put a speech together. <laughs> oh my god! Are you shitting me? I've got photographs. <laughs> Of that speech, that right out of the, their national magazine. Oh my God, you have got to be kidding me! That I mean, is that's like, amazing. Elmer, I'm like a, I was like a one of one of these TV ministers. You know, I was I was such a fraud. But that see, that's the thing is, I I say I, I you know I, I wrote a book and and it became a bestseller and and in my book I said look. I'm going to, I'm, I know I'm going to regurgitate things I've heard throughout my, my journey. And, and one of my favorite quotes is, there is no such thing as an original thought. All wisdom is plagiarized. Only stupidity is original. <laughs> like, like, I love that. You know, I love like, that. I wrote that in my book and I said, look, I don't know. I, I, there, like, if I heard it from Jim Ziegler, I'm going to say, I heard this from Jim Ziegler. If I heard it from Grant Cardone, I'm going to say, I heard this from Grant Cardone or yeah. Jeffrey Gittim or whoever. But, but like, like, I can't remember every damn person that said something I might spit out. I can't. But if I, I remember, love Gittim. I love Gittim. Are you. I understand you know him fairly well. I know Gittimer real well, yeah. I, I I love Jeffrey. He's a good dude, man. Last time I saw him, I was on a plane I, about two years ago. Somebody slapped him in the back and said, hello, Bubby. <laughs> <laughs> He's, he also flies first class. <laughs> yeah. I know he does, man. He's a great yeah. guy. Yeah, he's he's a super guy. Hey, do you know Eric Brower? He's on here, and he has a question for you. Okay, what's Eric's question? He says, Jim, what's the number one piece of advice you would give automotive consultants to get new clients? The number one thing to get new clients. For an automotive consultant. Well, first first of all, you, you got to make the calls. You got to make the calls. And, you gotta, and I'll tell you what, I wouldn't, if I was just starting out, I wouldn't be afraid to show up. Yeah, I mean, physically show up. Uh, there's something to be said for physical presence. Yep, I agree. But you want to you want to get new clients. When I started my company, I went to the recording studio where where the Baptist ministers all did their sermons, <laughs> oh, and I made a I made a I made a 30 minute recording on cassette tape. Oh my god! Okay, and I mailed it to every dealer in the state of Georgia. Holy crap! And it, the the tape the label said, I can increase the profits of your dealership by a hundred thousand dollars a month immediately. But there was no message of who sent it. They didn't know who sent it. They had to listen to the tape to know it was me. Oh. Wow. My first my first call was from a dealer named Dick Spring, Spring Toyota, and he said Mr. Ziegler, I want to. I got your tape. I want to talk to you. He said, my my brother died. My brother was the car man. I'm I'm an accountant. I don't know how to run a dealership. Would you work it out? I said, he said how much do you charge? And I hadn't really figured out how much I charged yet. <laughs> so I said, eighty five hundred dollars a month. He said, I got a problem with that. He said, I said, what what? He said, I'll pay you forty two fifty on the first and forty two fifty on the fifteenth. <laughs> I said, okay now. I said, now I'm going to need an office in the dealership and a dedicated phone line that you answer Ziegler Super System. <laughs> <laughs> and I need use of your office equipment. Are you kidding me? Oh, oh my I, God. I got, I got witnesses. I got witnesses. Wow. Spring Toyota gave me an office. 
use of their office equipment, a dedicated phone line that an- they answered with Ziegler Super Systems. Wow. And he paid me 8500 a month. He was my first client. Oh, my God. This was, this was before I flew up to Ford. Holy crap. Crap, man. I hope I'm answering Mr. Brower's questions because you got you got to go get it. You just got to go get it. That's it, Eric. Eric, he said, "I love it, Jim." Eric's a good friend of mine. He's the CEO of Dealer Global Dealer Solutions, and he's like, and he used to be a GM as as well. So, you know, well, you know, the thing is, I'm not in competition with these people, right? Right. I mean, Grant, Grant Cardone, pe- people have tried to pit me and Grant Cardone against each other for years. I love Grant Cardone. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I celebrate his success. Yes. And I'm going to say something to you that's, that I have no envy. Right. I don't want anything you have. Right. Now, I might want something like what you have. Right. But I don't want yours. Right. I hope that makes sense to you. It makes sense to me, and I love that, man. Well, you and I were talking before this broadcast about how many people I've pulled up and helped in the business. Yeah, yeah. I help a lot of people. I'll help Mr. Brower. I'll help anybody. I have no envy. You know, I'm I'm in the legacy years right now. I'm 71 years old. Everybody knows that. Yeah, yeah. And I'm still working, putting on big conferences, teaching Internet to young people. That, that That's such a kick. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I'm teaching entrepreneurial things. I had, you know. I'm making thirty-five thousand dollars a month today on my Facebook pages. Oh my God! Wow. Now, yeah, I'm, I make thirty-five thousand a month just just on people <clears throat> you know, relationships. That's incredible, man. I have a saying in my book, and my book's way out of print. I wrote it twenty years ago. But the most powerful people on earth are those people that influence the most other people. Yeah. Money is measurement. Influence is power. Yeah. Wow. And yeah, influence. So gather people. How yeah. many people are in your high school class? Mine? 84, I think. How many people do you know and associate with today? One. Okay, so in other words, those people drifted into the past and evaporated. Yeah, most you of them. You knew all 80 of those people at one time. Yeah. So mm-hmm. you lost the value of those relationships. Yep. Part of my theory is gather people and never let them go. Yeah, I love that, man. I do a hundred pokes a week on Facebook, poking people. Do you really? Yeah. <laughs> and people say that's that's childish. No, it's not, because it puts a little orange star on their and they and they answer. I it gives them a little that. orange star at the top of their Facebook, yeah. and they get back in my feed. And Facebook doesn't throw them out of my feed. Oh, my God. So those people that keep poking me, they've been to a Ziegler conference. <laughs> I teach poke, yeah. Poking is poking 101. We have a class on that. I'm like, dude, quit poking me, man. What the heck? I do, I, I do 60, 70, 80 birthdays every day. Yep, yep. People so, say, well, why, am, why are you up at 4 o'clock? Well, I'm up at four o'clock doing birthdays. Yep, I do that too, man. I do that too. And I think it's, it's important. People need to know that, that you're there. And it's all personalized stuff too. Yeah. yeah, I love that, man. That's the thing is, I think, and, and you're right. And and I, 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 like, there's too many people that go straight to the close. They go straight into selling mode. They don't do anything to invest in a relationship. You get that. You accept a new friend on Facebook. Instantly, they're trying to get you in their Bitcoin thing <laughs> or or whatever. And it's like, what the hell? You didn't wine me and dine me. What are you doing? Oh, well, you got to kiss me first. <laughs> Let's start with first base, you know, work our way around the bases here. What the hell are you doing? I love that, though, man. You're right. You're right. Yeah, I I genuinely care about people. Right, right. My my, my little byline on my my email says, um, do something good for somebody that can do nothing for you and try not to get caught doing it. Wow. Yeah. I love that. Wow. That's awesome, man. I'm going to try not to get caught. I'm going to fly to Florida and take you out to dinner, you and your wife. Oh, well, I'll lunch. lay you away. I'm, I'm, I'm not a cheap date. 
I, I don't <laughs> a cheap date. Hey, man, the value. And that's something, you know, somebody told me a long time ago. Maybe it was Brian Tracy I heard this from or somebody, but maybe it was Zig Ziglar. I don't remember. Um, but, but you know, like, hey, you want to be successful? Go buy a millionaire his, his lunch or dinner. Take a millionaire out to lunch or dinner. And, and I've done that so many times, so many times. And, and you know, that's, um, it's, it's, it's served me well. So it, it, it is. Um, I knew Zig Ziglar fairly well. I mean, we weren't, he used to say I misspelled my name. <laughs> he wow. said, I got a joke. He said to me one time, he said, I got a joke to knock your hair out. He said, Oh, you've heard it. <laughs> Jeez, that was funny. Zig Ziglar almost sued me one time. Why? Well, when I started in the seminar business in 1970-something or other, I decided to do a seminar in Tallahassee, Florida. Yeah. I'm living in Jacksonville. Yeah. I, I was doing the radio. And I go on up to Tallahassee, and I spent $7,500 on Tallahassee radio. I own. I was on every five minutes on three stations. Wow! I had the Black Contemporary Station. I had the Country Station. I had the Rock Station. I had every five minutes tonight at the Capitol Inn. James A. Ziegler free seminar. Wow! And Zig's brother, whose name, believe it or not, was Judge. Uh, Judge Ziegler shows up with an attorney. They thought I was impersonating Zig. Oh my gosh! Are you yeah. kidding me? No, I had to show my driver's license, explain, my name is Ziggler. I didn't know, I didn't know who Zig Ziggler was at that time. And oh Zig God. and I talked about that in later years. That, yeah, wow. how, how he almost sued me because he was in Texas, and, and he got a call from his brother in Mississippi. There's a guy impersonating you in Tallahassee. Well, get my attorney over there. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, Zig, that's, you know, that's what I said. You know, you know his name? Who, Zig? Yeah. Do I know his name? Yeah. Zig. No? Horace. Huh? Horace. Horace? Yeah. How do you spell H? -A Zig is a nickname. Come on. <laughs> is it really? Well, I was told that by somebody that was a pretty reliable source. It might be wrong, but I, I believe his name is Horace. Wow. No kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I, all I know is this. Now, that is, might be it, that might be totally wrong, but the person that told it to me was on the on the inside and, and sh had no reason to make it up. Wouldn't surprise me. Wouldn't surprise me. You know, you yeah. learn you learn a lot about people along the way. And and mm -hmm. and I got to tell you something. I am so I'm I'm very very grateful for you. I I, I, I mean that man. I I don't think I've laughed this hard on any interview <laughs> I've done. My face hurts. So, so, anything else you'd like to share with the audience before before we end this? You know, we, we we've all had our our bottoms where we hit the bottom and, and bounce back. And my my wife and I have done it twice in our business life. Wow, nineteen ninety one and two thousand eight. Two thousand eight in October fifteenth, my wife and I were in London. We were buying the Academy franchise for the United States. I wrote a ten thousand dollar check and had another ten thousand I owed. <clears throat> and that was the day the US economy crashed. Oh wow. I'm in London, October fifteenth. I had shut I had all my employees, I had six thousand square feet of offices, upscale doctor, lawyer, professional quality, class A building, wow. half a floor. I had a classroom that would seat 100 people in the office, wow. and I laid off all my employees, and I called the landlord, and I said, look, i I got to break my lease. He said, no, you can't do it. I said, I, I can't continue to pay you. I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm putting, my wife and I put close to a million dollars back in, into the company. Wow. From our personal money. I wasn't broke by any means. Right. But we were bleeding money out of every artery. Yeah. Right. And I and, you know, 2008. So the, the landlord said, I said, well, listen, I got I'll, I'll pay you two months rent and leave or I'll leave. <laughs> yeah, right. I said, which which plan better suits you? <clears throat> right. And he said, you're not going to do that. 
I called the city rescue mission. And I told the minister, I said, would you like about sixty or seventy thousand dollars of tables, appliances, computers, office supplies? Yeah. Well, here's the catch: you got to get them out of my office in one day on a Sunday. Wow. So he comes up with like a Mayflower moving van, a whole bunch of street derelicts. I said, you can't leave a paper clip on the floor. They cleaned out my six thousand square foot office. They took all the furniture, all the appliances, all the computers, and. When the, the landlord comes in Monday, it was a major la- landlord company. Yeah. He comes in Monday and gives me a call. He said, you did it, didn't you? Said, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He said, does that offer for two months rent still go? I said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. See, that's the thing is you just got to bob and weave, man. You got to bob and weave. You gotta, yes, you do. You got to adjust. My trophy wife just walked in here. Ah, uh, I've seen her. She's amazing. <laughs> I love my wife. I, hello, wife. Hello. <laughs> well, tell her thank tell you, you for, for, for... She is so good. 35 years we've been married. 34 wow. years. 34 years. That's incredible. Uh, yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Like I said earlier, she was all over me like a dog on a pork chop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you said she, she, she'd get mad at you for saying that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well listen thank you so much for being on here and and for for anybody that wants to follow you where's the best place to follow you uh i come up four million times in google to choose your poison um uh linkedin linkedin linkedin's good i'm james a ziggler on facebook but i'm only accepting people in the car business okay oh, you, you, but you i have an open open format on Facebook. You're welcome to follow me yeah. and you have all the privileges of somebody that I friended. Okay. Uh, James A. Ziegler, Z-I-E-G-I before E, Z- James A. Ziegler. Yeah. Uh, find, find me on Facebook. Find me on um, LinkedIn. I, I've got a huge network on LinkedIn. Uh, I'm awesome. a Twitter. I'm a Twitter. Cl- I'm a Twitter quitter, but I've got a pretty sizable network on Twitter. Twitter. Yeah. I don't go there very often. Yeah. You know, well, Instagram. I'll tell you what I'll do is I'll, I'll just go out and grab all your links and I'll share them out with this this video. I'll, I'll edit this post and share them so, so everybody can get a hold of you, man. So I, you're awesome. You're incredible. <laughs> Everything I saw before I, has been uh, reiterated for me, man. You're incredible, and I'm so grateful. I appreciate you taking your time. Next and, time I get on, we'll talk about the time I was in the Battle of the Toughest. The Battle of the what? The battle of the toughest. I got knocked out in 45 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> That's another story for another time. <laughs> Jim, thank you so much. You're awesome. Thank you to everybody who's been on here, shared this, liked it, loved it, laughs. I mean, there's a lot of crying faces on this, man. So thank you, guys. Appreciate you all. Jim, don't hang up. We'll see you guys later. Have a great day.